Okay, my name is Adrian Bauer, and then I've got the two companies going. One is an agronomy company, 419 Agro, and the other company is 419 Aerial. Um, on the aerial side, we have one helicopter operating at this stage. Well, there's a lot of job titles in that company. I have three job titles, actually. I'm um, uh, the executive of the company, and then I am the person responsible, maintenance control, and this is all Transport Canada kind of things. And then I'm the operations manager as well on that company. On the other side, I'm just the agronomist, and I now have one new agronomist in there working for me on that side, but that's what I am for uh, job title. Um, you know, they, they're semi-linked in the sense that obviously we spray mostly um, ag acres, you know, desiccations and fungiciding. Um, but the helicopter company has also split. We, we have what they call a 702-703 company, where we can do aerial work with a helicopter as well as air taxi. In other words, sightseeing or any where you can actually fly passengers for profit. Um, but obviously it helps with the spraying side because all these farmers need advice as well on what chemicals to use and stuff like that. So it's kind of linked, but I, I have more acres on a steady basis on the agronomy side that I do. And then if guys need aerial spraying, we're there to spray for them as well. But it works together. Pretty cool. Um, with 41.9 Agro, we've been coming up six years about. You know what? You <laughs> crawl around, around in the dirt and all that stuff. But no, basically you help farmers with everything farming related from you know, basically you start soil sampling, do soil analysis, tell the farmers what, you, oh, you, you don't tell them, but you make suggestions on what they should use on their land for different crops to try and get specific yields out of it. And then in the end, you pray to the Lord that the rain comes. So if, you, if you're an agronomist, you can't pray, I think you're in the wrong business. But anyway, um, and then take them through the season, look for problems in crop, uh, whether it be disease or insect or anything like that, help them make decisions on when to spray, what to spray. So pretty much everything related to growing a crop and giving them advice uh, during a season to grow them the best crop. Um, you know what, acres wise, you know, it's probably 100 to 110,000 acres at this stage. It stretches, you know, from the river up north to uh, New Brigden kind of, and then all the way from kind of cereal to just east of um, Acadia Valley, it's not too far east, well, a little bit over the Saskatchewan border, but that's kind of the block that we're working on. For aerial spraying, it's limitless. I mean, we, we spray here, we spray all the way from here in between to Hudson Bay. Um, we're going to spray wherever that needs. You can move the machine and spray anywhere you want. So that's, on the aerial side, it's completely different. But on the agronomy side, you're obviously limited to the number of acres you can cover and try and take care of guys because I mean if you don't if you're on their fields when they need it it becomes a mute point to be around so we're limited on the agronomy side but on the aerial side there is really no limit. Um, I'm originally me and my family came over from South Africa in 08 um, you know the political environment there just got a little bit nasty and my brother and his wife were doctors in Wayne at that stage I started working as agronomist for Richardson Pioneer at that stage and then left for Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan, working for another um, crop inputs dealer over there. And then a couple of years ago when we started this company, actually Jared Kuhn and these two boys, Ashton and Tyrell, they're shareholders in these companies as well. They got me into this area. They asked would I be willing to try something in this area and we started this together. So that's why I'm, I, I know the area and I like the area. So we lived here for a number of years before we left for Saskatchewan. But that's the reason we came back. I like the area and plan on sticking around. Um, I think our biggest issue is probably labor. It's hard to get guys to come and live in the area and stay here. Um, actually, the agronomist working for me now, I actually got from South Africa as well. Um, because it's hard. I mean, there's so many opportunities available in agronomy specifically that you know what you'll be here and train a guy off for two or three years and then build up a certain acre base and i need help to cover all the acres i have as it is so no i think it's labor is the the biggest issue the rest running logistics on the helicopter stuff is not hard we've got people working with us so it's not a problem the, the day i came to canada i already had the plan of working for myself one day anyway and then like i said um whenever we started six years ago 
Jared contacted me. Me and him have been family, oh, family, but friends for a long time. He actually came and visited me in South Africa at one stage, and he was friends with my brother at that stage when they were here. And he came up with an idea and, you know, called me up one day, and I was looking for something else at that moment. I was either going to stay in Hudson Bay, do agronomy there, or obviously this opportunity came up, and uh, that's how we got started. Um, I studied in South Africa for many years. I did um, my undergrad in South Africa. Started Actually, I started wildlife management first, finished that in South Africa. Then I started my bachelor's at the uh, University of Free State in South Africa. Then I went for a master's to uh, Virginia Tech in the U.S. Started there for a couple of years. And then I actually ran a business in South Africa as well. It was an outfitting business that I did in South Africa. But the environment for my family got too dangerous and decided, well, we needed a chance. And then Richardson offered me a job here. And you know what? What I picked up then um, helped a lot. But you have to get into doing your own thing, in all honesty, to do serious agronomy. And so it was just, and the, the guy I worked for in Hudson Bay as well, Aaron Serhan, he ran North Star Fertilizer at that stage. Um, he was a heck of a guy to work for, and I learned most I know, I mean, obviously studying, but the practical stuff I picked up through Aaron and his business, he gave me free reign there to do agronomy, and that's what got me going on it. Like I said, it's... it's Manpower, I mean, <laughs> weather, rain is the biggest issue here. Um, you know, we, we do what we can, but in the end, if the rain doesn't come, it's a pickle. And it's been rough for guys. But no, I mean, it's the environment. Obviously, this is not an easy area to grow a crop in. Costs are going up for the farmers, period. Um, and then, like I said, it was hard finding somebody to help me that would be willing to stay in this area, period. Um, but that's been the two main issues. I mean, obviously, it's weather related. I think any agronomist would say the same thing because everything is, comes down to the weather, but that and, um, and labor. It's difficult to find people to work for you. I mean, first of all, just the fact that you can get a business going on your own period is, is nice, and the appreciation the guys have in the area for trying to help. I mean, conditions are tough, but the farmers have been sticking with me. I mean, if they have to start cutting their, their inputs and stuff like that, it makes it hard. But the guys are really trying their best. I mean, they, they take advice really well. Um, but that's the most satisfying thing is the fact that the farmers are honestly, you know, trying to work with guys and giving a guy like me an opportunity here to try and help them. That has been the most satisfying thing for sure. I think the key thing was obviously growing up in South Africa there, things are just not as rosy as it is in countries like this. Um, I've always wanted to do my own thing. And like I said, I had a business in South Africa as well. I wasn't going to work for somebody the rest of my life, period. I think some guys are happy doing it, some are not. Um, but no, it's just trying to support my family mostly and trying to make it a new country like this. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, I worked at, especially North Star, when I worked at Hudson Bay, it was seriously busy. It had a very progressive business going there, so it was really busy. And I honestly thought starting your own thing might cut back a little bit on the amount of work you'll have to do. and give you more time with the family. It's been rough. Um, the last couple of years, I haven't had time whatsoever with my family. It's been really hard, but it's better. I mean, now that I have this agronomist, uh, Johan, working with me as well, things will get better, obviously. And as I expand the helicopter company, if I can get more people coming in to do some of the management and stuff, it'll make it easier. But up to now, it has not been easy. There's no doubt. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you've got to get done. There's no no help for it, but um, at this stage, I'm sitting really well. I'm comfortable with what the future looks like. Yep, a little boy and a girl, and um, daughter is now finishing high school, and uh, my boy is still, he's a couple years younger, five years younger than sis, and for him, it's been hard, because I mean, I can't, honestly, I don't take a day off in the summers at all. We try and get away to South Africa back home February or something like that, because that's a fairly easy going time. The helicopters are parked usually then. Um, and, you know, for agronomy, you know, at that stage, it's a matter of working with the guys on their blends and stuff, but there's no physical work to be done. So I've only been able to take time off in the winter sometimes, but no, I skipped the whole summers and that's been rough on the family. But now helping again, um, we'd be able to schedule. And if I have to, not have to, if I want to take some time off, it'll just be easier. But up until now, it's been impossible to do. In all honesty, I don't think I would have changed a thing. Um, 
I had opportunities to get into the business through both Richardson and Aaron, you know, what they offered me, because Richardson is obviously big ag input retailer. I would say they don't, I mean, they, they focus on agronomy. I don't think it's as aggressive on the agronomy side because, I mean, they handle grain and stuff like that as well. Um, opportunity with Aaron was just tremendous. If I didn't have that, that specifically, I, did, I wouldn't have tried doing agronomy on my own. So that helped tremendously. But no, there's really nothing I would have changed. I might have tried to come to Canada earlier in my life, seeing how, you know, how well we fit into this area and stuff like that and how good we've had it in Canada. I probably would have tried that a couple of years earlier. But other than that, no, there's nothing I'd, I'd change for conditions we're in at this moment. Well, you've got to have lots of plans and you've got to, you've got to have the drive to do something. But, you know, as long as you have enough plans, if you run out of money, go work again and try and get some more money. But you just shouldn't run out of ideas. I think you should stay flexible in what you're doing. Um, conditions change. Um, like a couple of years where there's no rain, I mean, things change. I mean, nothing stays the same. But... I think always keep your eyes open for more uh, opportunities. That's why we got into the aerial side of things anyway. I mean, the agronomy is all fine and dandy, but you know, look for other avenues and venues to, to um, expand the business. And this came about with 2016 being so wet, actually the Coon Boys year needed aerial spraying done and I lined up a helicopter company to come in and spray. And that kind of got me in the, into the idea of trying to do something like that on uh, our own. And help out whether it be for them or the area i mean it's just it's a it's a needed um, business so just be open-minded and look for opportunities pray no i just try and get lined up with the right people um you know there's obviously lots of options out there have a plan that you want to work towards um that's the that's the most important thing and when you start getting involved with people you know, don't go into stuff blindly, get lined up with the right people. And um, like I said, the opportunity I've had through Aaron, um, Richardson, everything that I've been involved in has given me huge benefit in life. Um, and then being involved here with the Coon Boys as well, they are a tremendous help. Um, I have their acre base anyway, so that's nice acres to have as well. And then Whenever you get people in, you make sure it's people that have their heart in the business and know what they're doing. That's pretty much it. If there was less red tape from the government, absolutely. And again, I'm ag-related. If the, if, if the agriculture does well, my business was, would do well. Even the oil patch, I mean, we have a 703 company as well. We can do, you know, obviously flying people. And 702 is early work. That includes firefighting, pipeline inspections, anything like that. Helicopters are really, or anything aerial, is really um, sensitive in that respect. I mean, if, the, if those areas flourish, anything else will flourish. It's the way it is. So I feel at this stage, um, if the government would do more in general, you know, they've been giving Alberta a lot of hell. But overall in the country, things are tough. Um, they're not supporting, I know they, the dairy farmers got help there in Quebec and, and stuff like that, but the grain farmers here are having a hell of a hard time. And the government is just not there to help these guys. So I think if we can get a government that would support the farmers better than what's going on, well, both my businesses obviously would flourish a lot more. It's it make life a lot easier because the farmers would be doing better. And that's what it's, it's, it relates to. If they're successful, we'll be successful. Chivis pasem par bellum. That means if you want peace, prepare for war. So always be ready for stuff that the unexpected. Just be ready. Um, you know, and there's going to be tough situations, but have a plan. Don't run out of plans. That's the way it is. You run out of money, it's one thing. Do not run out of plans. Business plan? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, on the agronomy side, I'm sitting good at this stage. I've got an agronomist in. Uh, I'll probably look for more people as time goes on. You know, keep on growing on that side. And on the helicopter side, um, I'm in a discussion now with a guy. I mean, it's a matter of working together in the industry with people that you trust. Um, if other, you know, aerial companies could help us and we could help them start working together in that industry. 
and then just keep on buying helicopters and expand the spraying business for sure. That's, that's what the basic thing is. And like I said, at this stage, we're so blessed that we have a bit more work than we can handle. Um, but I would just like for, you know, industry as a whole, I, the perspective of the world towards ag, um, you know, there's so much misinformation going on. And even the government on that side, too. Um, there's so much misinformation and respect, chemicals we use, how we do things. None of it is done by farmers in order to be detrimental to this planet. It, it's not happening. This is these guys' life. I mean, they can't go. The, the work they put into this land to try and get this land up to better standards, it's incredible. I mean, even when guys don't make money, they still try and nurture the soil and try and get these crops better. Um, if the world would just realize that ag is not out there, to hurt anybody. They're there to help the bloody society and the world for Pete's sakes. Um, that is the biggest and the most frustrating thing I have to deal with is the negativity towards agriculture per se. Um, and if they know there's no business where a guy puts everything they have in the dirt and pray that it comes back. There is no business like that. I mean, the farmers every year put everything they have into the dirt. Might rain, might not rain in order to feed people. I mean, yeah, it's their job is to make money, obviously, but in the end, it is to feed this planet. And if people would work together and not pay as much attention to Facebook and all that junk going on, we are at a, at a different time or a difficult time on this planet where, you know, social media, media runs the show. And there's so much misinformation that I, that's the main thing. If I could get people to just realize that the, the ag boys are trying hard. They're not doing illegal stuff or trying to ruin the planet or spray glyphosate and kill the planet. It's not happening. Most of the chemicals are safer than bloody well table salt. Um, but that's the main thing. If people just wake up and see that these guys are just trying their best as well, and they're trying their utmost best to do it the right way, that would be beneficial.